misuse my television, misuse my TV show and my radio show to warn the black community about these agents of Satan that look just like me. Okay? Uh, about three years later, man, I was downtown Patterson, New Jersey, my hometown, and I stopped in a bookstore and uh, I saw this book called Osiris and the Egyptian Resurrection. And I said, wow, what is this Egyptian resurrection? I know, the only resurrection I knew of or ever heard about was the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the believer who believes in Jesus Christ. And as I began to read this, man, I found out that the ancient Egyptian story is that the only way you could be saved and go to heaven and have eternal life, okay, was through your belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Osiris of ancient Egypt. I said, what is this? You know, and then as I began to read further, I found out that Osiris, who was the father, had a son, virgin born son, who was named Horus. And, brother, when I read that, immediately the information that these brothers told me three years earlier was illuminated by God. So it was just God's time for me to come into this awareness. Well, as I began to do more research and more study, I found out, brother, that everything I had been taught in Christianity, the entire story, the 12 disciples, uh, the sun walking on the water, uh, the virgin birth, um, you know, the miracles, the two fish, Lazarus being raised from the dead, uh, ascending on a cloud, the, vir the, you know, the, the great white throne judgment, the judgment seat of, of Christ, which is actually the judgment seat of Osiris. I found out, brother, that the entire thing I had been taught, brother, all of it, was stolen, copied, plagiarized, and then represented back to us under European ethnicity. That changed my whole world around. I am now unqualified to continue as a pastor teaching what I found to be a lie. But yet I wasn't qualified because I didn't know enough of the truth. So I stepped away from the ministry. I resigned from the ministry in 1993. Uh, and for a period of five years, but I just spent five years of intensive field, intensive field research. And uh, in 98, I returned back to the pulpit efficaciously. And now I'm teaching our story and the need for us to know who we are. You know, and that's what I mean by African conscious. See, Africa is not at the center of the thinking of African people. Europe is at the center of the thinking of African people. Or... Um, not only European culture is at the center of many of our people, actually the Arab culture is also at the center of the, many, uh, of the thinking of many of our people. And what we need to do as African people is return back to Africa as the center of our thinking. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's really what my ministry is about, brother. Returning us back to our spirituality and our God consciousness before the invaders came into Africa. Wow. That's a magnificent testimony. Well, thank you, brother. Uh, going All through, praise be to God for that. Going through, uh, you know, a, a real metamorphosis, uh, yeah. having stood in the pulpit and, and, and taught and preached and believed a certain way mm -hmm. and, and being mature enough to come to the realization, you know what, you know, I've been in error. Yeah. You know, and yeah. sometimes I wonder if, if most uh, pastors have that, Humility, or okay. have that awareness, or are the stakes mm. just too high? Mm. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Now, now I have to be. Let me let me come to the aid right quick of many pastors, man. Over ninety percent of our pastors, okay, are sincere brothers. They mean well, okay, uh, and most of them, over ninety percent of our pastors, are not academically prepared for this challenge. And when I say academically prepared, many of them, brother, have to work two and three jobs to survive, so they don't have time to do the research. Many of, over 90% of our pastors are in the pulpits based on what they learned in Sunday school. Wow. Growing up. Men, over 90% of our black pastors have not been to seminary, have not had any form of theological training. Follow what I'm saying? So their sincerity is to really get out here and just do what they believe God called them to do. And I respect those brothers. Okay, uh, I wish I could get to all of them and say, brother, let me teach you some more. The ones that I have a real problem with are the, are the less than 10% who are the mega preachers. 
okay, whose names I won't call on your show, okay, but uh, some of your mega ch- churches, man, whose pastors have been cemetery, cem- cemetery, cemetery, seminary trained. We understand. Uh, you got me, okay, <laughs> uh, who have had the privilege of, of excelling in academia, and they know that what I'm talking is the truth, uh, but they will not teach it because, like you said, the stakes are too high. They'll have to give up that Lexus. They'll have to give up that fine home they're in. Mm. Okay? Uh, they won't make the money that they're making. They'll have to give up their, their ecclesiastical political positions. Mm. Okay? They don't want to give all that up. You see what I'm saying? But uh, it's okay because they're going to have to reckon with it anyway because truth pressed to the ground will rise again. Well, Doc, if, if, if there are uh, pastors who, you know, uh, based upon, you know, today's program or or other experiences that they may have had, you know, like, you know, I would like to